First we had to remove the seat from the seat base by unscrewing the bolts that hold it down. Okay, so we sold the mystery cable mystery. Um, there, it is the seat um, seat belt pressure pad detector and so one comes up from the base of the seat and it's just tied to the bottom of the chair and that's what it got caught on. So we've just disconnected it, this one runs into the seat up there. Um, so now it's all fine, it's, it's disabled. We just have to cut off this tab and we're all good. on this seat are slightly different and they've just got one bracket at the front which is riveted on and then the back has what would you call that? Oh, it's just like, just like a bracket to raise it up. A little bracket that's also riveted on to raise it up slightly um, so Sam's just gonna angle grind these off because we just want the seat runners to be flat. We don't need these extra brackets. We finished cutting off all the extra parts on the chair. We're just spray painting this part black. In order to drill holes in the swivel plate, we put a piece of paper over the seat base and marked where the holes were. We then transferred this bit of paper onto the swivel plate and drilled holes where the markings were. Although we'd had the handbrake modified and moved forwards and down so it was lower under the seat, the seat would still not clear it with the swivel plate on. So we had a rethink and decided to take the seat brackets off the first seat on the passenger side and put them on the driver's seat. It was the driver's seat that needed to be higher up, whereas the passenger seat didn't matter because the handbrake didn't get in the way. So what we've done is we've taken these brackets and the front ones um, off the other seat and put them onto this seat instead to lift it up because um, otherwise the orange bit on the swivel seat doesn't clear the handbrake. So um, these brackets lift the seat up about an inch, which means that um, it can clear the handbrake which has been modified to go as low as possible. So we put the brackets on and then we've uh, screwed holes in the, uh, drilled holes in the plates again um, to line up with the holes in the brackets and we've screwed those on. On the other side Here, um, this one in the corner was getting in the way of the swivel, so we couldn't use that to fix the plate onto the bracket. So we've drilled two new holes um, through the plate, and they go, I can't really see very well, but they go into the thin bit of the seat bracket here to fix it on. So we're hoping that that will be enough to just keep those keep the plate in place. Um, so that's all fixed on. And the last thing we're doing now is we're just fixing the seat by the seat runners to the plate. And once we've done that, in theory, we should have a swivel seat. Um, 
our seat runners are stopping us swiveling the seat round, so Sam's just going to cut them off with the angle grinder and then we should have two fully operational swivel seats, so that's exciting. Once we've taken the brackets of the passenger seat and put them onto the driver's seat instead, we had to redo the passenger seat swivel and attach it straight to the seat base instead of the brackets. So this seat has been a lot easier. Um, we took the seat brackets off, I think I said in the last clip, and put them on the driver's seat to raise it up so that it will clear the handbrake when it turns and now we're just bolting the swivel plate onto the seat base so we already had holes in the back when we put bolts through those and we're just going to drill new holes to match the ones in the seat plate and screw them on. <laughs> 